हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग चैप्टर मोशन इन दिस चैप्टर द मेन टॉपिक्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस आर मोशन एंड रेस्ट यूनिफॉर्म एंड नॉन यूनिफॉर्म मोशन डिस्टेंस एंड डिस्प्लेसमेंट स्पीड एंड वेलोसिटी एक्सेलरेशन ग्राफिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ मोशन इक्वेशंस ऑफ मोशन Uniform circular motion. I have written the short form in that. This is uniform circular motion. Let us discuss one by one. Motion and rest. You have already learned about these terms in your smaller classes, right? Different types of motion you have seen: straight line motion, rectilinear motion, curvilinear motion, rotational motion, vibrational motion. oscillatory motion all these different types of motions you have learnt in class 6th right what do you understand by the term motion if the position of a particle changes with respect to time you can say the object is in motion and if the position of a particle is not changing with respect to time you can say the object is at rest right so basically motion means if the position of the particle is changing with respect to time and uh, rest means its position is not changing the position is the same it's not changing with respect to time and motion and rest they are relative terms these two are relative terms what do you mean by relative terms i can explain it through an example two people are traveling in a car one person is driving and the other person is sitting next to him and another person a third person is observing this car from outside so the third person who is observing these two people those are traveling in the car he will say that these two people are moving they are moving they are in motion so with respect to the third person who is the observer these two first two people those are traveling in the car they are in motion right but if i ask the driver of the car with respect to him his friend who is sitting next to him is at rest he is not moving in the car of course the car is traveling but with respect to this person who is driving the car the other person is sitting next to him so this is why we are saying with respect to what we are considering that matters a lot so from this we can make out motion and rest are relative terms right now another two important terms we can discuss they are uniform and non uniform motion uniform and non uniform motion from the term itself you can make out uniform there's a uniformity in that something which is similar something which is constant from the term itself you are getting some hints right so what is uniform motion i can give you an example here one person is observing the motion of an object that object is covering for example it could be a car a car a car is traveling 5 meter in every minute i can say it started its motion from point a and i am giving the time interval like this every 1 minute the car is covering 5 meter distance 
5 meter here also 5 meter we observed after one minute again it was covering 5 meter so here what happens every one minute or in equal time interval the time interval I have taken here is 1 meter so the object is covering equal distance every time it was 5 meter equal distances in equal intervals of time this kind of motion you can call uniform motion uniform motion I can also explain it in terms of speed that we will do in the after completing this topic once we start speed and velocity we can discuss it through that as well and if the object is covering unequal distances in equal interval of time for example an object it started its motion from here in the first five seconds it was covering 1 meter in the next 5 seconds it was covering 0 0.5 meter in the next 5 seconds it was covering 2 meters if a particle is covering unequal distances in equal interval of time you can call it is non-uniform motion non-uniform motion so what is uniform motion if the object is covering equal distances in equal interval of time you can say it is uniform motion and if the object is covering unequal distances in equal interval of time you can say it is non-uniform motion understood next topic is distance and displacement distance and displacement both the quantities both the physical quantities are lengths right so what will be the unit of this I can express distance in centimeter or in meters or in kilometers so here we have to express this distance in SI unit what is SI unit international system of units right so here if I have to express the unit in SI system or international system of units I have for length it is for length SI unit is meter and for time it is seconds I need these SI units in this chapter so I'm just start I'm just explaining this before starting the uh, next topic and for mass the SI unit is kilograms now I am explaining only these three because you need to use these three in this chapter more so I'm explaining only these three now and another thing I will explain is scalar and vector quantities this also we need in this chapter scalar and vector quantities scalar and vector quantity what do you mean by vector and scalar quantities see here we are discussing about different physical quantities force mass acceleration velocity distance displacement there are different physical quantities we are discussing in this chapter among these some quantities 
to express those quantities we need the magnitude as well as the direction for example if i have to explain force i am saying here i had an object over here i applied a force of 5 newton in this direction that is towards right i have applied a force of 5 newton towards right i am expressing the numerical value the magnitude and the direction as well if i have to express this force i need to talk about the magnitude as well as the direction here i am talking about the magnitude of the force and the direction such kind of physical quantities you can call vectors they are called vectors now what do you mean by scalar quantities scalar quantities to express scalar quantity you don't require the direction you don't need to specify the direction to express a scalar quantity you just need magnitude you need only magnitude right such kind of quantities you can call scalar quantities for example for example here i can take the same example of distance to explain distance i just need to say that it has covered 5 meters the object has covered 5 meters i am not specifying in which direction it has moved so if i express only in terms of magnitude i can call this physical quantity as a scalar quantity this is a scalar quantity and the different scalar quantities i can give you examples like speed mass all these are physical quantities which has only magnitude no direction so i hope you understood the difference between scalar and vector quantities right now we can come back to the topic we were about to discuss that is distance and displacement for this i will give you a simple example a person he was moving along a circular path there are two points which is along the diagonal there are two points a and b so if a person start walking from point a he has taken three rounds he has completed three rounds and come back to point a so he 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 has completed three rounds and come back to point a and he has taken half more round or i can say all together he has taken 3 and 1/2 rounds along the circular path and the diameter of the circle is 10 meter radius is 5 meters right so can you tell me what will be the distance traveled by the person if he has completed 3 and 1/2 rounds to find distance i need to 
consider the path he has taken the whole path length he has traveled i have to consider for example suppose he he, he has started his motion from point a he will take one full round so i have to i have to consider the whole path length so here it is a circle so it will be the circumference of the circle what will be the formula for calculating the circumference of the circle it is 2 pi r right circumference of the circle pi r right now so he has taken one round and he has taken another round again he has taken one more round right so three complete rounds he has taken right so what will be the distance he has traveled 2 pi r again 2 pi r again 2 pi r so three times 2 pi r right then he has not stopped with three rounds he has taken three and half rounds right so i can say the total path length he has traveled is three times two pi r plus half circle that is pi r right so here it is seven pi r this is the total path length he has traveled total path length he has covered this is called the distance traveled by that person right 7 pi r if you want to just substitute pi as 22 by 7 I can just get the answer suppose if I have taken I'll just drop this this was my what was my radius it was 5 meter so one round uh, 2 pi r so it is 3 pi r plus pi r right so it is 7 pi r I have got circumference or the total path length hmm? total path length I have traveled is 7 pi r so which is equal to 7 into 22 by 7 multiplied by 5 so it is 22 fives right 110 meters will be the distance traveled by this person so for calculating the distance I have to take in the total path length covered by the person so distance means it is the total path length another example I can say one person is traveling all over like this from point A he is going to point B then he is coming to point C then he is coming to point D then he is reaching point E if I am asking you to calculate the distance traveled by that person you need to calculate all the path he has traveled the total path length you have to take that means the distance from A to B then from B to C then from C to D then from D to E this will be the distance traveled by that person now what will be the displacement by the person displacement is different from distance in displacement you need to consider the direction as well displacement is the shortest distance between the initial and final point it is the shortest distance between the final and initial point for example if I am saying that this person has traveled here from point A he has reached point uh, B then came back to point A how many rounds he has taken all together he has taken three and half rounds right so if this person starts from here and coming back to point A 
the distance travelled will be 2 pi r the whole circumference i have to take but the displacement will be the shortest distance between the final and initial point here the initial and final point are same so what will be his displacement if he has come back to its original path it will be zero right so if three times he is coming back to the same point so after completing three rounds his displacement is zero so what what is the only thing you have to consider what happened in the last half round right what happened in the last half round this is the only thing you need to consider so what will be that if you have to discuss the displacement what is displacement shortest distance between final and initial point shortest distance between final and initial points right so here you see he has completed three rounds he came back to point A so till now the displacement is zero but what happens when he covers this half round half round means he has covered a distance of pi r while taking that half round but what about displacement it is the shortest distance between the initial and final point so what is the uh, shortest distance here it is the diameter of the circle right so what will be the shortest distance if he has covered if he has completed three and half rounds it is just the diameter of the circle right so that is here it is the diameter of the circle that is 10 meters right so displacement and distance this is the main difference distance here it it can be like here there can be different path you can travel but shortest distance between the final and initial point there could be only one shortest distance right so that will be something unique here you are considering the direction as well right that is how you are taking that shortest distance so that quantity is a vector quantity but the distance is a scalar quantity you don't have to express the direction in that case you just need to calculate the path length right both of them are lengths only so you are expressing them in meters meters is the SI unit if you want to use other units to express like kilometers centimeters etc that also you can but if they are asking to express in SI unit that is meters right so distance is the total path length covered by the object and displacement is the shortest distance between the final and initial points thank you